Welcome, NFL fans, to another episode of Sports Kings Presents NFL Talk. That's Sports Kings, sports-kings.com. Uh, we have a whole website devoted to sports, football, basketball, baseball, hockey, UFC, whatever, you know, anything in sports, you can come check us out at www.sports-kings.com. You can also find us on Facebook if you search sports-kings or talk to us on Twitter at Real Sports Kings. Tonight with me, I have Brett from Down a Distance. Brett, how's it going? Good, Andy. How are you? Got, got to watch a little NFL this week with the Combine. I think I'm the only one that might have watched it, but better than nothing. I was watching all those marvelous 40 times. The 40 means so much. Uh, and then we have Shane. How's it going, Shane? How's it going? 340 days. That's how many days are left as the Seattle Seahawks as the Super Bowl champions. And last but not least with us is David, our baseball guy talking football. That's right. Yeah, looking forward to the, the best thing about football ending is that baseball season starts soon. But I do appreciate a good football offseason, so free agents draft. We'll talk all that good stuff. The spring training, you're salivating at the mouth a little bit. So we're going to bring you guys a little bit of NFL, I guess we're going to call it divisional talk. We're going to kind of break down some of the ideal free agents uh, or draft picks for each team, starting with the AFC East. Uh, that's obviously the Buffalo Bills, the New York or New Jersey Jets, the Miami Dolphins, and Austin's boys, although Austin's not here, the New England Patriots. Uh, let's get a shout-out to Austin. Austin, we miss you. Come back again when you're not planning that wedding. Um, and let's start right off with the Bills because we know that that's Brett's favorite topic. And, you know, we're kind of just going to dabble a little bit into to what these guys need, uh, you know, whether it's better for them to maybe get it in the draft or possibly free agency. As of right now, it's a little cloudy because there's still going to be franchise tags handed out and the, the free agency lines are a little blurry still at this point. Let's go right to you, Brett. What do you think uh, the Bills need to do here either free agency or draft-wise, or both, what are their, their biggest needs right now? Got to be linebacker, some sort of offensive tackle, offensive guard, um, and a wide receiver or tight end. Uh, if I'm looking draft, I'm thinking Greg Robinson, Tyler or Taylor Leland, Jake Matthews, uh, maybe a guy like Khalil Mack if he falls, Sammy Watkins if he falls. Um, in, the, in free agency, they normally don't go after bigger names. I know Mario Williams, they got him a couple years ago. That was shocking to everyone. Um, maybe a guy like Carlos Dansby or Brandon Spikes or Pat Anger for a linebacker. Um, but they need to improve their linebacking core. They they struggled against the run last year. And the, the Bills finished 6-10, and 10, which has, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously not their worst finish, but it's it's got to kind of sting a little bit knowing that the Jets were in the same division. Uh, you know, the debacle that they were, but they're drafting ninth. So, Shane, let's kick it to you, and, and what do you think the Bills need to do? I think the Bills probably need a left guard, as uh, Brett kind of indicated. They also need a wide receiver. I do believe that they also need a linebacker. The problem with the linebacker, uh, when you look at the, the – they need specifically an inside linebacker to play next to Kiko Alonso, and when you look at the free agency market for linebackers at the inside position – there's not a whole lot there out there on the market other than Carlos Dansby, and he's 32. So when you look at what they're drafting, they need two positions that they might not want to waste very high picks on. I certainly don't think that they should probably address those needs in the first round. I mean, picking I believe they're picking 10th overall. Um, those are needs that they'll have to address, but they're probably going to have to address ninth, them. In the I believe. Sure. What's that? Yep. Ninth. 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 So they'll have to. I think those are positions that they'll have to address in the later rounds. As for the wide receiver, you know, there's deep talent this year in the draft at wide receiver, but if uh, if um, Sammy Watkins were somehow able to fall to them, I'm sure they wouldn't hesitate to pick him up. David, your take, same question. Yeah, but Buffalo, they're obviously going to go with E.J. Manuel for a couple of years. I'm not sold that he's the future quarterback there, but this isn't the time to go out and get a guy to challenge him. So take that E.J. Manuel's there. I would build, start with the offensive line. I would... I would try to go early in the draft plus a free agent there. You can never have too many good offensive linemen, especially with C.J. Spiller, who's a decent weapon. Give the quarterback some protection. Give the running back some holes. 
depends on what happens with Scott Chandler, but they could go for a tight end to complement him and start to build the team that way. I, I think their defense is okay. I just don't think it's as pressing of a need uh, you know, for an early draft pick. I, I certainly agree with the guys that – that looking at an offensive lineman at that nine spot, if a Jake Matthews fell that way, that would not be a bad pick at all, the kind of guy you can build an offensive line around. And I hear you guys with the offensive line, and it's always such a like internal battle for me when I'm talking, uh, you know, a young quarterback, as we've alluded to with E.J. Emanuel. You know, do you need the line or do you need the weapons? And you talked about C.J. Spiller, David. I think he hit the nail on the head a little bit there. Spiller's a weapon. Um, Fred Jackson's a weapon. But for me, they, I feel like to, to give the young guy in EJ a little bit of a security blanket, they, obviously they need a line, but they, I think they need a good target, whether that's tight end or wide receiver. Um, I've never really been in love with Stevie Johnson much. And Brett said before the show, you know, he's probably more of a number two. Sammy Watkins falling to them, you know, at nine is probably a stretch. But there's other guys. I mean, you have... Uh, the guy from USC, uh, Marquise Lee is his name, I think. Uh -huh. yeah. um, you know, there, there's guys out there. So you guys have talked a lot about the draft. What about free agency help? Is there a possibility either with the line or with a receiving target, such as a wide receiver or a tight end, that the Bills could target potentially here in free agency instead of trying to get one in the draft? We'll go to you first, David. Yeah, I, I certainly think I, I think they need uh, at least two big hits on the line. So if I were looking for a free agent, I, I'm not sold that there's a good wide receiver or linebacker out there for them to um, accentuate. Get a good line guy, a good gritty guy, an aggressive guy, somebody who's physical. It doesn't have to be, say, the left tackle, the star guy, but you get a good like number two and number three lineman. Then to complement that target in the draft, I think they need at least two good linemen. We talked about guards and tackles. So I think that's – that's where they do need to focus, and certainly free agency. I don't have any names in front of me, but um, so maybe early for that. But but I would definitely at least, if I had some free agent money to spend, that would be at the top of my list if I was the Buffalo uh, front management. Well, and you just said it right there, Dave, but it's kind of hard with the free agency. I hate to put you guys on the spot, but it, it is because we don't know what's going to happen yet. Shane, how about you with, as far as free agency help goes for the Bills? Well, I think if they're going to look for free agency help between their positions of need, um, outside um, the guard position, I think there's not a whole lot of depth there. When you look at the wide receivers, you have some big names on the market like Anquan Bolden, Josh Morgan, Hakeem Nix. Um, not sure if they're going to actually target any of those old, older guys. I think we're, if they're going to address a need in free agency, it will be the guard position. Um, you got guys like Jeff Schwartz, Travell Wharton. Um, I wouldn't even rule out Richie Incognito. I mean, I know he's been a problem, but I think he knows he's under the market microscope, and a team that needs a guard might not rule out signing him. And Brett, we saved you for last because these are your boys. What do you think? I mean, I actually think if they're going to target someone in free agency for offensive line, it's going to be a tackle. There's there's plenty of big names out there. Uh, there's Brandon Albert. There's Michael Cole, uh, Michael Orr, um, Eugene Monroe, Anthony Collins. There's a bunch of big offensive tackle names out there, at least. Uh, so I think if they're going to go free agent, it's going to be offensive tackle. And um, I, I think in the draft, it, they might try to go after a guard like maybe Cyril Richardson in the third round. Um, Doug Marone was an offensive tackle coach, I, I believe, with, with New Orleans. So he can work with some of the later round draft picks to turn him into better guards. Yeah, and again, and I, I'm a guy who likes the wide receiver thing too, and I look at the free agency too. Shane, you popped off a few names there, and I, I you know, it makes me come back to a guy like Eric Decker. Is he going to end up staying in Denver? Um, big guy, 6'3", 26 years old. Um, I, I really, I personally feel like the Bills do need to get EJ Manuel a target, a guy who can do a little bit of everything. I don't think he necessarily needs a burner. I don't know if that's going to be a great fit because I'm not really sure if he can make the passes consistently downfield. They Maybe already have some of those. Yeah, and they and they have, and, and you know they could probably go find Lee Evans. Um, I don't know if he's employed these days, but they, I, I think they need a guy who can kind of do a little bit of everything. Um, and again, the free agency, it's kind of hard to predict. Uh, real quick, the, the Bills stats here, since we're talking about offense a little bit, I don't know if any of you guys looked into this, but the Bills were 15th in the AFC in passing offense, 
first in rushing, and that was all I had in the way of offense. The other one I had was uh, fourth in defense. Well, the Remember? rushing, the rushing, uh, the rushing ranking is kind of a misnomer. I did read into that some of that today, and the Bills actually ran the ball more than everybody else, but they ranked right in the middle of the league in yards per carry. It, yeah, and absolutely. Well, it, I mean, the the it, depending where you go. Um, per, I went to ESPN for this one. It's it's. Uh, oh yeah, I'm sure. It's I'm based sure on a few things. Well, that's right. also because totally. you had you had. Right. You had them starting a rookie quarterback who went down, and then you had Jeff Toole, who was an undrafted free agent, and then you had Thaddeus Lewis, or Thad Lewis, who who was a journeyman at best. So they relied on the run game to try to win some of those games. I mean, that's probably why they had so many rushing attempts and so many rushing yards as well. Absolutely, right. and they have two, you know, quality running backs. I mean, it's it's not, you know, it's it's not a secret, but uh, yeah, I think they were like twenty three hundred rushing Ooh. yards. And they were just over four yards per carry, something, something to that extent. It was, you know, something I looked at before the show. Um, let's jump right over into the New England Patriots. How about we go there next? And we'll start with you, Shane. Did you have one first yet? What do you think their biggest needs are, either free agency or via the draft? Well, I think the one of the weaknesses of the. Patriots were, were their guard play. Dan Connolly was actually pretty bad this year, and so was the center, uh, Wendell. So I think that the Patriots will look at re assigning another guard or drafting one, spending a draft pick on them this year. I also think, and a lot of people, you know, I, I know Austin may not agree with this, but I think, I think the Patriots actually market for wide receiver. Uh, I think they did well, and I think they did well because of Tom Brady. I don't necessarily think that their wide receivers are all that talented. So I think when, when – you look at the draft this year in free agency, I don't think it's out of the question for the Patriots to make some kind of move. They're not very high in the league in terms of the amount of cap space they have. Um, compared with all the other teams, they, the league average for cap space right now is $20.4 million. The Patriots only have 9.3, so they're not going to be able to go out there and spend a lot of money. But you never know. Bill Belichick might go against the grain of what uh, – um, what he typically does in moving back in the draft, he might move a little forward if he sees a receiver that he that he covets for Brady. And, you know, actually, it's funny because I had wide receiver written down too, even though you just said that Austin probably wouldn't agree. So I guess he's not agreeing with us. Um, my question really was, and actually you kind of half answered it a little bit, I guess, um, what – what did, what's better for the New England Patriots? Because Tom Brady's not getting any younger. This isn't necessarily a, a team that – can can they afford to bring in a wide receiver and try to develop a wide receiver to, to win right away? Or do they need to maybe say, hey, we're the New England Patriots, we have Bill Belichick, we have Tom Brady, you know, come here, your possibility of winning a championship is higher, and they can convince a veteran to maybe take a little less money. Um, yep, yeah, go ahead. I think as long as you have Tom Brady under center, you're always going to be in win-now mode. You're always going to be try, trying to sell that point. Um, there's been talk that some teams might be interested in Ryan Mallett. There's been talk that the Patriots may be interested in trading him. I, I'm kind of concerned about that because I would think that the Patriots would have to actually spend another pick on a quarterback to develop behind Brady if they don't extend Mallett or they trade him. So uh, I think my opinion is, is that the Patriots, as long as they have Brady still under center, they're in win-now mode, and they need to build their team accordingly. All right, David, how about you? What do you What do you think the Patriots need to do? Yeah, you know, number one, get Gronkowski back healthy. That's a big part of the offense for them. And, and if Brady has him as a weapon, then they can really fill in with some other guys that aren't number ones. They don't need to go out and get a, a, a big uh, receiver in the free agent market. They're so crafty at those draft day deals where they trade back. You know, they trade maybe their first rounder, get a second, third, and a fifth. Because they've got their eye on a guy that nobody else has their eye on, and they can they can feel that way. Uh, they, they do need to address the wide receiving, and they do need to address the offensive line. They had some injuries this year, but that Broncos playoff game, they were just getting dominated. Where Brady was just under pressure the entire game, and he never really could get comfortable. And that's the thing: a comfortable Brady, if he had Brady comfortable with a good offensive line and Gronkowski, their offense will be fine. They'll just need to make sure that they either. We signed to leave or, or replenish that defense. They're always turning over the defense. Uh, but th that's the way I would go. Just get that line healthy, hope Gronk comes back, and then maybe fill in. They'd be a little help a wide receiver, but not one big name. 
you know, and, and despite their their record this season, Brady seemed, you know, especially from like a, a fantasy football point or standpoint, Brady seemed to not really look comfortable all that often uh, in comparison to other seasons. I mean, they still won 12 games, but, you know, may, maybe they, it is time to get some. Maybe they do need some offensive line help. But part of that might be the receiving core, and you hit on the Rob Gronkowski thing. Man, they could really use that Aaron Hernandez guy. Um, I'm beating that one to death. Brett, let's go to you since you're uh, no longer muted. What do you think <laughs> the Patriots need? Uh, well, if Austin was here, I guess he'd agree, disagree with all of us because I, I would say wide receiver help as well. But I'm going to touch on a couple that I, I don't think have been touched on yet. Um, in the draft, I, I could see him going after a defensive tackle, someone like Aaron Donald from Pittsburgh, someone like Steven Stewart from Notre Dame, Timmy Jernigan from Florida State. Um, I, I think the, their interior defensive line is aging, and I think they should address that. Um, and depending on how free agency goes, cornerback, if a, if a quib to leave leaves for uh, another team, I could see him going after a, another cornerback because – they're, that secondary is going to need help if he leaves. Um, other than that, I think you guys touch on it. Wide receiver, you could, I'd like to see. You know, you'd like to see him get another wide receiver in there. But that's probably a veteran, not a not a rookie. Because like you said, they're in, they're in win now mode, not let's develop a rookie wide receiver for three four years. And Brett had written down his needs for the Patriots, and then under that he had his wish list, which was like kicker, punter, punter, kicker, 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 because he really wants England to do horribly. Horribly, horribly, horribly bad. Um, hey, hey, you know what? I, I actually, I don't know if I can say this as a Bills fan, but I, I respect Tom Brady. I, I, I don't like him because he beats the Bills, but he's one great player, so I'm ready for him to retire. Austin, did you hear that? You know he's listening somewhere right now. So, you know, it's funny what you said because I had a defensive lineman. I was kind of a little vague there. I didn't have a defensive tackle necessarily, but just a D lineman of some sort because it does feel like they're missing the ruckus there a little bit, but... You know, somebody to maybe replace Vince Wilfork down the line because he's not getting any younger. And then not, cornerback was my other one. They, I mean, they have Chandler Jones and Rob Ninkovich who are both yeah. pretty good at tight end. Or not, d defensive end. Defensive end, yes. You're not, they're not replacing Vince Wilfork down the line. They're replacing him this season. I firmly believe that Vince Wilfork, unless he takes a pay cut, will be a cap casualty. He's going to save the Patriots about $8 million in cap space. And he's going to save him, like, four lockers in the locker room because that guy is huge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, all right, so we can we can run to the next one as long as nobody else had anything on the Patriots. Are we good? Good thing Austin's not here. We'd still be talking about him. <laughs> we, we might be. Um, just wait until we do the uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers with Jim Ricardo sometime. Um, so <laughs> let's jump into the next one, and that'll be the Miami Dolphins. Um yeah, I think a lot of people expected the Dolphins to, to be I, – I expected them to be better. I don't know that I expected them to get off to the start they got off to. I think that surprised a lot of people. But overall, I felt like they might rally and be a better team. We'll go to you first, David. Uh, Brett doesn't like us tonight, and he left again. David, what do you think the biggest needs are for the Dolphins, either free agency or via the draft? They need – a lot of help across the board, especially on offense. I mean, uh, with everything that went on, I mean, they're not going to get Martin or Incognito back. So it's two really good linemen that, that sort of that are out the door. They're going to have to replace. That's a good point. I'm not sold that Tannehill is the quarterback of the future there. Uh, he seems to do okay with the weapons around him. I mean, I think they need help at running back. I think they need a little bit of help at wide receiver. Maybe of, of all of them, that's the least. But – they don't seem to be in the market to go out and get a new quarterback, so I think they're probably going to focus on offensive line and running back, and and I'm not sure how much help they can get there, not at their draft position. There's not a lot of elite running backs that I'm seeing jumping off the page at me in the draft. I'm not seeing a lot in free agency, so they're probably going to have to stick with, like, Lamar Miller and, and hope for the best, but this team seems to be regressing, particularly, and again, with the front office, with the whole problems they had last year, front office turnover, head coaching turnover, all those type things. So, they, I predict them for the seller, and and they, they probably need to think long term at, with their draft picks. Get some, get a young lineman at their draft spot. Uh, just just find the best talent available, and not maybe try to fill a, an immediate need. Because unlike the Patriots, who need to fill immediate needs as long as Tom Brady's there, which I agree with, the Dolphins need to start rebuilding for the future. Maybe Tannehill is the guy, and he'll still be around in four or five years. So 
Uh, that's the direction I'd go. A lot of holes. Um, and, you know, the Miami kind of gets the short end of the stick, too, uh, in terms of the draft, because they were one of six teams that finished with the 8-8 eight eight record, and they ended up with the, the least interesting pick of those six teams. They're picking 19, uh, you know, versus... Versus if you look at, say, <laughs> the Chicago Bears are picking 14th with the same record. So that, you know, that always stings a little bit, too, I think, when you look at these drafts having the And, and the Bears the are like record. one play away from the playoffs. If not for a miraculous and yeah. Rodgers play week 17, the Bears would have been in the playoffs and drafted 20 or 21. So that's, you know, how, that's how close the league is. It kind of reminds me of the Sports Kings Fantasy Football League this year. <laughs> when I was... Don't go uh, there. <laughs> when I was uh, tied with the uh, fourth and fifth place teams, had the same record, and all that I needed was for the the two seed, I think he was, or the one seed, to to beat the five seed the last week, and he lost by eight points. Still, who won the good. fantasy football league? I don't. I think I think Jim won. <laughs> Jim won, but Jim couldn't beat Jay the final week of the season. To move me into the playoffs instead of Jay, whatever. I think they were first and second, actually. Actually, I think we need an asterisk next to them because I'm pretty sure they split the pot. So uh, let's let's go right to Brett. With the, we got a little off track there, my fault. With the Miami Dolphins, what do you think their needs are? Uh, I mean, I actually disagree with Dave a little bit. I, I think Tannehill is the future. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if he's uh, Tom Brady or Peyton Manning type of future. But I think he's a pretty good quarterback. I mean, they they led the NFL in the most sacks allowed last year with 58. Um, I know Lamar Miller was injured most of the year. I'd like to see what he does. But they're going to have to address the line, offensive tackle, offensive guard, um, and maybe cornerback too. They have Brent Grimes, um, who's a free agent, uh, Chris Clemens, who's a free agent as well. He's a safety. So you got to see what happens with the two of them. And then from there, maybe they address a, a cornerback like Justin Gilbert with their first pick in, in the NFL draft. Shane, last but not least, what do you think about the Dolphins and their uh, offseason needs? Well, one of, the, one of the good things about the Dolphins, you said that they were the picking last among all the 8-8 eight eight teams. However, out of all the 8-8 eight eight teams, they have the most cap room. They have $28.2 million. They're the fifth most in uh, the NFL. And I think when you – before you get to any other need for the Dolphins, it's got to be offensive line. Like uh, Dave pointed out, they had the Richie Incognito mess. They also have Bryant McKinney and um, Tyson Claybo are free agents. So they have a lot of problems on the offensive line that they have to fix first before they can even look at anything else. And to top that off, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised they have so much cap space, but... Um, they had one of the worst free agency signings of 2013 in Mike Wallace. He just didn't produce for them. So I think the Dolphins are going to spend uh, either a lot of money or at least two, well, probably more than two, quite a few draft picks on their offensive line going forward. And that's what I was kept wondering, actually, before you even said it, like this whole time you were talking with the cap room, because I didn't realize they had all that cap room. That's why Shane's here, ladies and gentlemen, because he knows these things. You're a um, capologist. Yeah, our capologist. I was I was kind of wondering, you know, once you said they had all that cap room, is are they going to blow a bunch of money again on somebody that doesn't, you know, really deserve that kind of money, you know, a la Mike Wallace? So let's <laughs> let's. Uh, oh my, let me give my thing. I, you know, I really think that Miami needs a, a running back. Obviously, without offensive line help, that's probably not going to work. But you need something. I mean, I, I feel like they, they probably need a wide receiver too to help Tannehill because Mike Wallace really is a one-trick pony, uh, in my personal opinion. But, you know, maybe they need a bigger guy. Uh, but they definitely need to do something with the running game because it seems like it, it doesn't ever seem to really work for Miami with these running backs lately. Um, you know, either they're, they're out getting high or, you know, they're, they're trying to run the Wildcat and that doesn't work. And, you know, then they got Reggie Bush who was made of glass. And thank, thanks for that guy. Um, so let's let's move into the Jets. Last but not least, and you know, surprisingly enough, um, the the Jets really had a, a dis. A, I guess it's a disappointing couple of seasons at this point, really. Um, and they ended up finishing. They ended up being, you know, we just talked about the eight and eight teams with the Dolphins, and they're one of those eight and eight teams. 
although they'll be drafting, uh, I lost them. They're drafting 18, so they're drafting just one ahead of Miami. Um, we'll go to you first, Brett. What do you think about the Jets and their needs? Well, I, I mean, uh, I saw you muting that dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want him on there. Uh, I, I mean, it's tough. I, I want to say quarterback, but they're not going to go after a quarterback. I, I don't. I don't think Geno Smith is the answer there. I, I don't think he's going to be their future. So I guess until then, you got to go with maybe a wide receiver. See if they can add a wide receiver in the free agency. Try to get him some help and see what he does in year two. But I would pick quarterback if I was if I was them. Shane, your opinion here. Well, I actually, you know, agree with Brett on the quarterback issue as far as like addressing it. I think the Jets desperately need a veteran quarterback. I think Michael Vick is actually a perfect fit for the Jets to come in and compete for the starting job. Uh, I still think Geno Smith has some to learn. It wouldn't hurt him if he lost the starting job to Michael Vick and learn maybe a year under him. They do need wide receivers. The Jets have the 10th most cap space. However, they're going to vault themselves over to $50 million if they release Antonio Cromartie, um, Mark Sanchez, and um, Santonio Holmes. So the Jets are going to be big players in free agency this year. And really, I would not rule out Michael Vick coming in and competing for that starting job this year. Outside of that, wide receiver is their primary need. What about Matt Flynn? Is, is he done getting all these yeah. chances? No, nobody else is going to pay him? I think so. I, I couldn't even say it with a straight face. I really, really, really tried to. Uh, you know, another guy that's floating around out there, too, is Josh Freeman. Uh, I don't know if anybody really still has faith in that guy. Matt Shane Castle's kind of, available out there, too. Yeah, Matt Castle's out there, Matt too. Matt Castle wants to get paid more than $3.7 million. That's what he gave up in Minnesota. Yeah, he's – yeah, I don't even know. Uh, so, David, how, how about your feelings on the New York Jets? Yeah, a lot of aspects here. I certainly think they need some help at wide receiver in the short term. If you're going to put a guy like Geno Smith out there, and I'm, I'm a college football fan, so I got to see him play at West Virginia in college a lot, and he did really well with, with weapons around him, at college-level weapons, mind you, but he was able to uh, to really distribute the ball, and he, he needs some wide receiver weapons uh, first and foremost. I don't know if at their draft spot they're going, they're going to be able to get one of those elite guys. Probably not. Free agency, probably not a guy they can get, but maybe if they could swing a trade or something, trade up, that would be where I would go. I, I, I do think Geno Smith, I'll take Geno Smith, and I'll let uh, Brett um, take the Miami quarterback, and, and we'll compete head-to-head, because -head. I don't think Geno Smith is a is is the future. They're going to put some faith in him and see where he can go. Uh, I was surprised to look that they were in the top, I think, six in rushing offense last year. They don't have the big name running back, but they're able to move the ball. They have a uh, I guess a defensive offensive, a decent offensive line to move the ball. Their defense is pretty solid too. Um, so again, I would look at wide receiver as their biggest need, and I'm not sure how they're going to fill it in the short term, uh, given the parameters uh, that they're playing in right now. You know, when I had a wide receiver and I have quarterback written down here too, so I guess I tend to agree with Shane and Brett a little bit in that aspect. Um, the thing with me for wide receivers, I would have been sold on wide receiver, but David, you just said it. I don't know that they can get somebody that's worth get. I mean, maybe there's somebody worth grabbing there, but as I look at the 17 teams who draft before them, there's a lot of teams. I can't say for sure will take a wide receiver, but there's a lot of teams where if they did take a wide receiver, I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, there's every team needs a couple of weapons, and there's quite a few teams uh, drafting ahead of the Jets that really could probably, I mean, Chicago's probably set, Dallas maybe set, we never know what Dallas is going to do, um, but I, you know, the, the Rams, the Jaguars, uh, the, the Browns, the Raiders, I mean, all these teams, I mean, Atlanta's not going to probably take a wide receiver, Tampa Bay, Minnesota, Buffalo, Detroit, Tennessee, you know, do you see how I accentuated Detroit? I can't even, like, Stop myself from doing that. That's really weird. Um, but anyways, yeah, I, I kind of agree with the Geno Smith stuff. I don't know that he's the future. Shane, you said it with Michael Vick. Michael Vick is the kind of guy who, you know, Geno could absolutely learn something from Michael Vick being that. I hope, hopefully not fighting dogs. But, uh, you know, their play style does have similarities to it. Exactly. They the wouldn't have a chance to play So, yeah, exactly. I mean, in, in – Vic, you know, we, we do know Vic, Vic still has the ability to win games as long as he can stay healthy. 
I just don't know uh, weapons wise with the, the Jets receiving core if they can get it done. And David, I did have that written down too with the Jets, uh, the rushing in the AFC. They were like number two. Again, Shane kind of blew me out of the water with that one early on. Hey, what, what's up with Mark Sanchez? Nobody even talked about him. Is he still alive? I mentioned him. He's he's going to be a cap casualty. He's scheduled right now. He is the highest paid backup quarterback in the league at thirteen million. I believe it's thirteen million. It's in there. And he's, I, I, he's frozen. I actually think guys are you guys are wrong with the with the wide receiver spot. Uh, I, I think there's plenty in the draft that could get. I think a guy like Mike Evans could fall to him. Kelvin Benjamin, um, Jordan Matthews. I know none of you guys know who I'm talking about, but they're they're all there in the first or, or late in the second if they trade down. It, it, absolutely, but you know the thing that is why what I was saying, what I was saying. I think that you know there are a lot of teams who, if they take a wide receiver, I'm not surprised at all there. So it's it's one of those waiting games, and the Jets might just have to wait and see who falls to them. Obviously, every team's kind of waiting to see who falls to them, but. Uh, you know, in, in that case. And as far as Mark Sanchez, I think he eats up a lot of the cap space by buying hair ties um, and, and, you know, that sort of thing. So he always has, like, pretty hair. Uh, I don't think we're going to have time to, to do another division tonight. That took you know, close to a half an hour. So let's let's give it a little shot out of a cannon here. I know it's early, and we'll probably change this 100 times. Who's your early pick to win the AFC East? And we'll go with you first, David. I'm saving you for last breath. <laughs> well, yeah, it, I, to me, it, it's pretty much the Patriots, and there's not even a close second. I do think Buffalo is going to move up. It depends, again, on what happens with their quarterback position. I think the Jets, again, there's a lot of moving parts with the Jets. I could see them making another move up. They almost did the, the, the most with least last year, considering the flux at quarterback. And, and again, no big-name running backs, but they're able to move the ball. And, and a solid, you know, always start with a solid defense and you can compete. So I would say definitely the Patriots, Tom Brady and whoever you put around him. Um, and then I would say maybe Buffalo or the Jets can get to nine or ten wins. And I think the Dolphins will be awful, which is unfortunate. I'm kind of a Dolphins fan, but um, they'll finish last. So uh, I put all my money on the Patriots square there. All right, Shane, it's uh, your turn to pick the Patriots. <laughs> exactly. Right. I mean, you, anytime Tom Brady's still on that team, I'm going to go with the Patriots. However, if the Jets sign Michael Vick, I really believe the Jets will be positioned to be a 10-win team next year. I think they need to make a big move like that in order to get, or else they're going to flounder in this eight and eight, nine and seven, seven and nine, and 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 never really get anywhere. I think they need to do something big, and I like that Michael Vick signing actually. Well, I mean, and David, you said it before, real quick, before we get to, to Brett. If, if you kind of paid attention to football last year, say you didn't, you know, obviously we're, we're all writing sports constantly and stuff like that, so we kind of get the inside track and we probably see more than the average person. But if, if you weren't paying very close attention, say you were, a, you know, a Sunday, go to the pub and watch the games kind of person, we probably thought the Jets won three games. Right. I mean, I don't, I, you know, they didn't really remind you and, you know, that quick skim look down the thing that they didn't remind you of a team that was 8-8. Eight and eight. So, um, you know, that there is something to be said about that, and that, that running, off, that rushing offense was, was kind of, you know, exceeded expectations a little bit. The passing offense, on the other hand, that's a, that's a story for another time because they were last in the AFC. Brett, your pick. Oh. <laughs> Buffalo, go with it. Do it. <laughs> no, I can't. It's not – it's it's way too early for this. I don't, I don't know how I could do this before March first, but I, I'm sticking with the Patriots. It, it pains me to say this. It's it's not the Bills' time yet. I got to see what EJ Manuel does. I got to see if Jerry's Bird stays. I want to see year one under Jim Schwartz. Uh, I mean, if Mike Bettine stayed, I might have been close to saying, okay, maybe they can take over the Patriots, but not yet. I think I think Buffalo and New York will battle it out for second place maybe 9-10 wins, and I agree with David. I'm a little concerned about Miami. I know I like Tannehill, but I think the offensive line is going to make it hard for him to pass in, in 2014. Well, the Bills are going to have Jim Schwartz out there trying to convince Marone to go for it on, like, 4th and 26. You know, <laughs> Calvin Johnson. Let's, let's see. Yeah, let, he's, he's over there. You just tell EJ to throw it up to Megatron. That's all you have to do. It works every time. 
Um, and, and my pick, obviously, is, is going to be the Patriots, too. Shocker. I mean, this wasn't really a very good question, but it was going to be the question I asked regardless of the division we did at the end. And obviously, this stuff will change. I mean, it is... As David and Brett both said, I think Shane might have said it too, it's it's way too early for, for uh, the predictions and stuff because we don't know what's going to happen in the draft and free agency and, and what have you. Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. We have a lot of fun with these NFL shows. We'll probably have Austin back next week, I would assume, and we'll probably kick in the more divisional stuff. I want you guys to all go to www.sports-kings.com. Check us out. Leave some comments. Tell your friends. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. Right over here is our little logo. That's the Sports Kings logo. You can find us on Facebook at Sports Kings. Just search for that and chat with us on Twitter at Real Sports Kings. Have a great night.